Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. Hallelujah. And uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord, to hear what God has to say to us. Amen. And, uh, you know, sometimes during praise and worship, it helps us, it helps us to center on God and who God is. And um, so that God can speak to our hearts, we get to open up to God. Amen? Amen. Um, so sometimes you, you can it really easily, real easily, you can stumble into church on a frantic mode, <laughs> running late or something, a mishap or, you know, and with children, a mishap can happen pretty easily. <laughs> so, uh, or just yourself you can... So we come to, but we come and we just get our hearts centered on God and hear what God has to say to us. Because God wants to talk to his children just like any good father would. Amen? You know, uh, there's, I've, n I've never been in, in, uh, in history, well, in my little history, just my little 72 years, <laughs> I have never seen so many people needing therapy and they always want to go back to their childhood. <laughs> Let me see, everybody's childhood was messed up in some way. Because we are born into imperfection, and we are imperfect, we can't expect, you know, perfection out of sinful mankind, amen. So, um, you know, people, people can always try to go and dig back to, in, in their therapy, why they're so messed up. I'll tell you, it's plain and simple. We were born into sin. That's why we're messed up. Amen. We're born into sin. We're sinners. The Word of God says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so um, how do you remedy this? Because this is huge in the church. Everybody's, everybody has to have a therapist. Let me just say, the Holy Spirit is the best therapist you'll ever have. Amen. And he will teach us what the Word of God says about our future, not digging up our past. We can all just say, you know, the past is past at last. And everybody got, everybody got dealt, you know, some people, you could look at somebody else and think, man, they got a dealt a pretty good hand in life. But we don't know what a person goes through. Things might look good on the outside. You go to social media and everybody just posts all the, everything that's polished and looking good on the outside, but doesn't know the torment a person goes through. But um, God knew about that. He knew about, he knew about 2024 before he created mankind. And... Um, he had a plan. Amen. And in the beginning, we know in the book of Genesis, <clears throat> it talks about in the beginning, all the different things that happen. But the first thing it talks about, the very first thing it talks about, the very first chapter of Genesis is in the, in the beginning. And, you know, people might say, well, in the beginning, God created this and God made that. And, but if, if you look in the beginning, it said, God said. <laughs> How did this whole thing start? God was saying stuff. He said, let there be, and there was. And he said, let there be, and there was. And he said, let there be, and there was. So how God created things was by saying something. Amen. And so um, <clears throat> that can create havoc when we say bad things because then we're creating a negative atmosphere. But God, God said, God kept on saying, and he created all the stars and the moons and, and the, the fish in the sea and and all the lobster and prime rib, and he created it all. And, um, and he said, and he said, and he said, and he said, and it was, and it was, and it was, and it was. <clears throat> but then he said, in Genesis 1, he said, let us make mankind in our image. That was the one creature that he was making different than all the other creatures. Amen? In our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures and the move along the ground. <clears throat> Anybody ever been to SeaWorld? <laughs> and you see how they train those orcas. Like, you know, those are man killers. <laughs> I always think, how in the heck do they train, you know, people that train animals and dogs and they train them to do all these tricks. And I realize, oh, that's why, because God created them to. <laughs> he created them to rule over them. Amen. And m mankind has been ruling over ever since. And so in 27, he says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So in time, he realized that <clears throat> when he created man, that he um, said, uh, it's not good for, in 2.18, that it's not good for man to be alone. 
I will make a helper suitable for him. And so we know that um, down to 21, it says, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, it took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man and he brought it. He brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of a man. Amen? So when God created, amen, after he did all his creation, he saved the best for last. That's where that comes from. He made man, and then he made woman. <laughs> and so if you go through that story, you'll see that um, they became one flesh. They had offspring, and they had children. Now, isn't that funny? that God's prized possession was a man and a woman, and they had children together. And so we are all related. We are family. <laughs> we're all family, amen. We're in, the, we're in the family of humanity. But Adam and Eve fell, and they fell into sin, and so God had to do something to save this family. <laughs> I gotta save this family. Amen. And so that's exactly what he did. He promised the Savior to save the family. And so in time, he sent Jesus his son. Now there you go. The Father sent the Son to save the family of humanity. You think about it. That's always been what's been on God's heart and his mind, is to have a family. Amen? And um, when you, a lot of times people will have smaller families because they feel like financially it's not expedient or some things happen, you know? But um, when you own the universe, you can afford to have a really big family. Amen? Amen? I was raised in a big family. It's a little chaotic. I'm just saying, every human being brings wonderful gifts and talents and abilities and chaos. <laughs> Why? Because we're humans. We're just humans. We're human beings. <laughs> and so, in understanding and embracing the fact that God created in the beginning what he always wanted was a family. So much that he sent his first begotten son to save this family that he, that he wanted. He wanted a family. Amen. And sometimes in our society, in many societies, we all think of our family like we are. We're the family. But that's not how God looks at it. God looks at the human race is a family. <laughs> amen. See, the kids always bring an amen corner to church. <laughs> but God, did, God didn't just want the human family. He wanted a family of righteousness and, and a people of God. Amen. God, God saved humanity for thousands of years. And, and he had a small group of people who were the Israelites. But he just, didn't, he just didn't want to have a people. He wanted to have a family. Amen. His goal was a family. No. Now we know that the human race is a family. And then we know that the Israelites were considered God's people. But not until the first person that was able to be born again could be considered the family of God. Amen? <clears throat> yeah, it's always been about family. It's absolutely always been about family. And, um, <clears throat> and just in remembering the fact that it's about family and what and who this family is, because sometimes... We can get very narrow-minded on, on who our family is. 
and what the family is. Amen? Let's look at John in chapter 1. God said, heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. God's word is the standard of morality. It is the standard of righteousness. God's word is true, and we can count on it to never change. Now, let me just explain one thing about it is there's lots of translations. Translations are mankind trying to make the best effort, their best effort, to translate things that were written in Hebrew and in Greek thousands of years ago, enabling us to read it and understand it. So they'll take a word and try to, like, we don't, we don't speak King James, amen, which was the first English translation because that was the only way they spoke English, was it thouest, <laughs> emist minus, what a, I don't speak English. I don't, speak, I don't speak of the King James, but the King James English was written, it was written in Elizabethan English. It was the way they spoke at the time. So when they translated it, they translated it into the way they spoke to help people understand it. So we can understand that in the original Bible, it didn't say thee and thou and thus and it didn't say it like that. So that was written for them at that time because that's how they spoke and it was the easiest to understand. But it's really hard sometimes to, if I, I'm, I'm single-lingual. <laughs> I know people are bi and trilingual. I mean, people speak a lot of languages. And sometimes it's a little difficult to find one word to explain one word in another language. Sometimes you have to, it's almost like a sentence, you know, like you have to, use a few words to explain it. So just in understanding that when we're reading different translations, they might have used one word that might have needed three to explain it, okay? And, and just because a lot of people say, oh, this is the only really good translation. You just got to have the Holy Ghost to read any translation. The Holy Spirit's the teacher. But in John 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 9, if you're taking notes, if you want to write it down, I wrote, I'm reading this out of the NIV, which is the New International Version that came out in the 70s. It said, the true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world, and he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. So we can understand when Jesus came, they just didn't recognize him. They didn't. There were the Israelites the Jewish nation was looking for a savior because they had been promised one. Amen. They just didn't recognize him. They thought he's going to look like something else. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about positionally. They thought that he was going to come as a king of glory. Well, he is coming as the king of glory, but he had to come first as a savior. Anybody ever heard of the same Jesus is coming back? I hear it all the time now. Somebody had, somebody had a dress on that was in some Paris Fashion Week, this black dress, and it said the Lord across the top of it. It was a real fancy dress, and on the back it said, is coming back soon. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, look at that. It's even in Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> people, are, let me, you, people don't have to be a Christian to say Jesus is coming back because something got to change. Amen. Can't keep going the way it is. And so um, just in recognizing that the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, why? Because he is the son of the living God, and he, he was given flesh. He did not have flesh until he was born in the manger. God gave him flesh. And so it says, and though the world was made through him, he, the world did not recognize him, and he came to that which was his own. But his own did not receive him. The Jews just, just didn't receive him because they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. They're like, that ain't him. He's coming as the king of glory. Well, he's coming back as the king of glory. Amen? Amen. Yet to all who did receive him, anybody can shout right there. Anybody did receive him. 
to those who believed in his name, got to have Jesus. You can't say, I just believe in God. You've got to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To those who believed in his name, he gave, he gave, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent, nor a human decision, or a, or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen? Now, this is the Bible, this is the Word. God's Word will never pass away. It's the same yesterday and day forever. And just so we know and understand that God could have said it any way He wanted, but He chose to say children. He, he gave them the right to become children of God. Hallelujah. I know sometimes some of these things are so profound, it's hard to get it. You're like, I know there's something more there. I'm not getting it. Just open your heart and hear what God has to say. Amen. Born of God. Remember, it's all about family. It started with the family. Amen. It's going to end with the family. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have got to be familiar with what God was looking for from the beginning. He was looking for a family, right? So in, in 1 Timothy 3.14, Paul writing to Timothy is saying, I am writing these things to you now, even though I hope to be with you soon. Because he was traveling, he wanted to be with Timothy. He says, so that if I am delayed, you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. Think of it, in the household of God. Who lives in the household? The family, amen? And so this word that God has given us is so people know how to conduct themselves, not only in the household or in the temple or church, whatever it might be called, but in the household, because we are all part of the same family if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen? Hallelujah. And God gives us the right to be called the children of God in the name of Jesus. So he says, so that if I am delayed, you will know how to people, how people, the children of God, amen, the sons and the daughters, and how we should be, how we should conduct and how we should act not only in church, but in our own personal lives, there's much instruction about how husbands should be and how wives should be and how children should act, how employees should be, amen, servants, slaves. There's lots of instruction in the Word on how everybody should behave, the qualifications, amen. Hallelujah. This is the church of the living God, which is the pillar and foundation of truth. Hallelujah. God is... It's just like, a lot of times we think, you know, we came up with ideas. But when you have a mom and a dad, you know, a, a man meets a woman, and they're drawn together, they love each other, they get married, they have children. It's a family, right? It's just a family. So when they come together, they produce a family that produces a family that produces a family. I was telling, I was telling a guy, I go, I know people that are my age that are great-grandparents. <laughs> How could that be? I'm way too young. <laughs> but, but I'm saying this thing, that the people that I went to grade school with are grandparents, are great-grandparents. <laughs> you know, this thing just keeps moving forward. Amen. It's hard to believe that our grandchildren could someday be grandparents. But it happens. Because that's what families do. They just keep populating. And that's what the family of God does. It just keeps populating. Amen? And so understanding that the family of God began when the first person received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has continued to go on. But it, how does it go on? It, it goes on because how will they know unless somebody tells them and, and how will somebody tell them unless they've been sent? Now, now let me say, uh, God could send you to a, a country. God could send you to another state. God could send you a lot of where, places to do, to do ministry. But he sends you every day somewhere. 
He sent you to school. He sent you to work. He sent you shopping. He sent you to the, get gas in your car. He's sending you places to be, to be part of the family of God and to have an opportunity to grow the family of God by telling others about Jesus. Amen? Because unless they know about Jesus and have an opportunity to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, they can't be in the family of God. And a lot of times people are like, why is Jesus taking so long to come back? Like, what's going on? Because he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, which, is mean, which means he's waiting for more sons and daughters. You know, a lot of people are like, we're going to have two. That's it. We're going to have two. <laughs> some people are like, oh, I want to have a big family. I want to have five. <laughs> and some people have, um, my mother was one of 14. Because <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> they were radical. My, my dad came from a small family. He was one of eight. You know, families were just big. <laughs> we don't even know big compared to what God wants for his family. He wants big, a huge, monstrous family. I don't know, sometimes it seems like the more, the more, the bigger the family, the more kids, the more chaos, and I'm more radical, and you know, I, I, I don't know about you, you guys probably didn't have this situation, because I was one of eight, and you know, we could have so much fun you know, big family, we could have so much fun and laughs and play games. And, you know, my dad would take us, you know, flying kites and go on vacation. We would have so much fun. But I'll tell you, <laughs> take three seconds to knock somebody out. <laughs> Here we're playing and having fun. And then we're having a big old fight, yelling and screaming and, and getting in a brawl. And my parents are yelling and screaming at us to stop fighting. Why? Because parents usually hate it. And they should hate when their, their children are fighting with each other. Where did that idea even come from? God. God doesn't want his children fighting and not getting along, but loving and accepting each other for even their differences. Amen? Because we are all different. We could look at each other and say, oh, yeah, we're different. But we're, we're not just different by how we look. We're just as different from the moment we were conceived to this very moment. Our lives were all on a different track. And we can expect people, well, you know, they should be like this or they should be like that. But they didn't, everybody's seen and experienced totally different things than one another. That's why we have to be loving and forgiving, Amen. In Matthew 12, verse 46, it says, While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Isn't it funny how naturally we think we have ownership on each other? <laughs> his, his mother and brothers outside, bring him out here. We want to talk to him. <laughs> Isn't it funny how natural, naturally speaking, as a natural family, we think we, we have a say-so in each other's lives and what you should do and how you should do it. Amen? But they were waiting outside for him, and someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. They're dying! <laughs> they want you to come out there right now! <laughs> they, they, weren't, they weren't all also into Jesus and his fame and, and him going around healing because there was a lot of backlash. And they didn't like what people were saying because somehow it reflected on them. It doesn't really. <laughs> Amen. So he replied to him, who is my mother and who is my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sisters and mother." Jesus still talking about family. This is my family, those that do the will of God. Jesus says, this, my, my family, it, it's not a natural thing. That, there is a natural family, but the family of God supersedes 
all of it. Amen? Supersedes all of it. And we have got to know that we, as the children of God, have many brothers and sisters from a lot of different denominations. That doesn't mean any, everybody in any denomination is a brother or sister because the only brothers and sisters are those that received Jesus because when you receive Jesus, it gives you a right to be the child of the living God. Amen? And so, so understanding that God wants a family, it's always been about family, and you must receive Jesus to be in the family, and that we need to get along in the family. Nothing, nothing more heartbreaking for parents when their children, their, their children don't get along with each other. But we have, to, we have to get in a place where we can accept each other's idiosyncrasies and knowing that every, one person's experience in life is not the next person. I don't care if you're raised in the same family. Everybody's experience in, in this life is different. But the common denominator is accepting Jesus Christ being born again and getting into a brand new family. One that, one that Jesus calls his family. Amen. In 1 John 3, verse 1, and this is the NIV, it says, see what great love. I love it because if we look at the word of God, how many references to family there are. There's so many references. When people pray, they go, oh, Father God. <laughs> they, were, they talk to God as, as he's their father. Amen. And I'll tell you, I don't care if you had a good dad, a bad dad. I don't care how indifferent. If you had no dad, it doesn't matter because everybody's on the same playing field. They can get a brand new dad and he could be the best dad ever. You can't compare this new dad to any other dad because he's God. Yes, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's understanding. He's always a friend. He's a healer and a provider. That's what we look for in a father. Amen. So in 1 John 3, 1, it says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us. And, and if we don't understand some of these scriptures, we need to take the time to read them and study them, meditate on them, and ask God to show us what these things are and what they mean. Amen. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. There's so much in front of us. Not only in this life, but whoa, the life to come. There's so much for us. God's looking for a family and he wants children, but he wants children that are obedient and that are loving and full of faith and hope. And it's, these are not things of our own. These are things that we make a decision. I am going to walk in love because it's easy to not. It's the easiest thing to not love. It's just like saying, I am going to exercise. It's easier said than done. Amen? All the things that are worth having are, are, are worth the work. Amen? And so God wanted a family, and he's getting one because he's coming back. And when he comes back, that means he's got the family he wanted. Amen. He thinks big. He thinks large. Amen. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known, but we know that when Christ appears, woo, <laughs> that moment, how's he going to appear? He, it, it says uh, he's coming back on a horse in the clouds of glory. Amen. 
And it said every eye is going to see and every ear is going to hear and everyone is going to know. Oops. Either you're going to say, glory to God, hallelujah, the family reunion is at hand. Or you're going to say, oops, that was a big mistake. All those people that told me about Jesus, but I refuse to believe. Amen. Hallelujah, dear friends. Now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been known. But, what, but we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. Uh, I'm not going to explain that one because it's way beyond our, comp our, our comprehension to even imagine what that's going to be like. But he's telling us anyway, even though our comprehension can't even perceive how awesome that day will be. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. That is our goal as the children of God. We just purify ourselves. How do we purify ourselves? By submitting ourselves to God, surrendering ourselves to God, receiving God's word for us, amen? Praying in the spirit, doing the things that we know we should do even though we don't feel like doing them. Amen. We purify ourselves <clears throat> because we are the children of God. And he's a holy God, and he loves us, and he has a plan for us. Amen? And he wants us to multiply. That's why Jesus said that we have the ministry of reconciliation. We're reconciled people to God. We talk to people about Jesus. Amen? We tell people about the goodness of God and God's love and forgiveness. Amen? His love and forgiveness. God just wants a family. He doesn't care how far off you are from the mark of holiness and purity. He wants you so he can make you holy and pure. Amen. God loves us with an everlasting love. That's why he's waiting so long. So what are we going to do? We're just going to keep telling people about the goodness of God. Amen. We're going to keep telling people about how awesome our God is. Because he wants a family. He wants you to be a part of his family. He just doesn't want you as family. He wants you to be a living part of this family. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't we just say a little prayer here? Amen. Why don't everybody just kind of bow their head? We're all in a different place with God. I don't know how long ago you got born again or if you're born again. But from this very point on, we want to know what God has for us as individuals. God has something for you to do that's very specific. And it was made for you and you were made for it. Amen. So let's just take this time to just pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just come before you and we thank you for your plan and purpose. For your desire. Hallelujah. What you would have for us as individuals. Hallelujah, that we would know your love for us. That we would know your love and that we would walk in your love one toward another, Father God, no matter what uh, denomination or, or persuasion of people. But Father God, we know that, that we have brothers and sisters all over the world that might be a part of a different church, but nonetheless, they are our brothers and sisters. And we decide to love one another and to not split hairs over, over doctrinal beliefs, but to just love, to just love in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that this is an opportunity for each and every one of us to decide to be an active part of the family, that we're not hiding in some room somewhere, but we're an active part of your family, and that we do what you ask us to do. Hallelujah. While we're praying, if there's anybody, if there's anybody in this place that you 
Maybe you never accepted Jesus. You heard about Jesus, you know about Jesus, but you just never even prayed to ask him to be your personal Lord and Savior, that you want him to be your Lord and Savior. If there's anybody in this place, just slip your hand up. Um, maybe you just want to um, um, have a deeper revelation, understanding of the love of God and who family is. If, if you just want to say a prayer, we'll just pray together. If you just want to say a prayer of, of a of dedication, rededication, amen, because today is a day of dedication, amen, and so we're going to dedicate or rededicate. We're coming to God on, 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 on his desire for us personally and for our lives, amen, that we can have what God wants for us. So let's just say a prayer. Say, Lord God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the word and this message and that it's always been about a family. You made families in the beginning and you want a family now. A family that chooses you over this life but chooses your way of life. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord, not just my Savior, but my Lord, that I do what you ask me to do. I go where you tell me to go, and I be what you tell me to be. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for this opportunity. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's like every day we can kind of rededicate just rededicate, dedicate, rededicate that day to God. Amen. And start all over. God is a forgiving God. And God does not care about your past because he cares about your future. Amen. And you can't take your past into your future because your future is too great for your past to hold. Amen. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, I just want to share with you for a moment the importance of receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You might believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and the King of glory, but you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you can just say a little prayer right while you're there. I'm going to just pray with you. Say, Father God, thank you for Jesus, and thank you for the life that he has given me. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. If you believe that in your heart and you just said that, that makes you a born-again Christian. It doesn't mean you understand everything. Hallelujah. It's a lifetime of learning of the goodness of God. Be acquainted with the Bible and all that's in it. And when somebody teaches something, go to the Bible yourself and start searching through it to see if what they're saying is true. Find a good Bible church. Amen. A Holy Ghost Bible church that teaches the Bible. Amen. And you are welcome here if you're in the area. If not, just begin to communicate with God and ask God what you should do. Amen. He will show you which church that you need to be a part of, where you will grow and flourish. Also, your family will. Amen.